Hello, Keith right here at VintageMachinery.org. Well, guys, I got a little project. I uh, hope probably shouldn't take too terribly long to knock this out, but a little machining video that I think you guys will enjoy. And uh, I'm working on uh, this little item right here. And uh, if you guys are know anything about steam engines or been around steam engines, you probably know what this is. If not, uh, what this is, this is actually an oiler uh, that's used on a steam engine. And uh, basically what this does, a steam engine, unlike a modern motor or engine that we have today, you know, you have an oil pan in there that slings oil up on all the bearings and keeps things lubricated. Well, on a steam engine, uh, the way they actually lubricate the cylinders for the piston to go in is they uh, actually atomize oil, put it into the steam, and this oil is actually in the steam as it's going through there, and that's what lubricates it. This item here is an oiler, uh, and it is basically what it does is it atomizes that oil and injects it into the steam. So you will actually have a line coming in up here in the top. This is a little dome here uh, that uh, builds up a little head of pressure on here. And uh, it will, uh, it, I, don't, I don't know exactly how the insides of this thing works, but basically you got a reservoir of oil. And uh, over in one of these tubes, you'll actually see a drip of oil kind of go up, boom, 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 just real slowly. Uh, it's in a column of water here and it will just drip up. And then that basically will go out into a line that goes back into the steam line. And uh, that atomized oil then goes into the steam itself and uh, oils everything. So this is an old one uh, that I picked up somewhere and a friend of mine is um, restoring an engine and needs a oiler. And I told him, I said, well, I got one for you. So uh, he's gonna get this from me, but it's got a broken part on it. We gotta fix it. Uh, like just about everything I own, I uh, gotta do something to fix it. So let me show you what's going on with it, what we gotta make and uh, we'll go from there. So this oiler was actually made by the Detroit uh, Lubrication Company in uh, Detroit, Michigan. And uh, when I got it uh, right here, there's a valve in here and I've, I've taken this out. Uh, but you see down in here, it's got a little um, seat that a needle valve goes into. And uh, there's a stem, in fact, this is it right here that screws up through this piece. Uh, it's got room for some packing in there so that you can keep the steam in. Uh, and you just basically open and close this to move that needle valve in and out. Well, when I got it, uh, the needle valve was broken. Uh, the handle was broken off. Now there happens to be another needle valve on the same part. Uh, this is a little bit different, uh, but I'm gonna assume that this one was made the same way. Uh, so you basically just have up here at the top was a little T handle and someone tightened it up too much and snapped it off. So I've got some brass stock here uh, that we're gonna turn that out of, uh, make that, and then also got another little piece of brass stock that we'll use to make a T-handle to go in here and basically make a new part uh, to go in here. So here's the existing one that was in good shape, and I came in here and measured the thread diameter and uh, you know it's obviously 3 8 I mean it's right on 0.375 uh, and coming here with a thread pitch gauge and my 16 pitch fits it perfectly so 3 8 16 that's a standard size thread I was assuming that this other one would be the same I come in here and measure this one hmm 0.355. That doesn't add up to anything that's uh, standard, at least not on the fractional uh, measurements. It comes really, really close to, uh, what was it, nine millimeter? So 0.3543 is nine millimeter. So um, I know this isn't metric though. Uh, and then I come in here, I check my, so well maybe it's just worn. I take my pitch gauge, put that 16 on there. 16 doesn't fit. So I go up one to 18 pitch, 18 threads per inch, and boom, it's a perfect match. So that one's got me a little confused. I don't know what this measurement comes from 0.355. That's not anything standard, uh, but that's the nice thing about having a lathe is I can make it whatever dang size I want to. And uh, 
So we're just gonna make it 0.355 and we'll single point thread on there, uh, 18 threads per inch. Um, no need for a special die. We can just do it right there on the lathe. So let's go get the lathe set up and we'll start cutting this piece. So we're set up over here on the lathe now. I've got my collet chuck on here and uh, that's what we're gonna be uh, working off of. I got a piece of half inch thick brass stock that we're gonna machine this little piece out of down here. And uh, I'm gonna start off by just coming in here. We're gonna face the front of this. I'm gonna cut all this off later, but I still wanna have a good flat surface to reference off of for my length which is my next uh, piece here. We're gonna cut this uh, piece a hundred or inch and a half. So just scribe a little mark there. And I wanna turn that down to, what was it, 0.355 I believe. And verifying that, 0.355. So uh, come in here and touch off. on this and we're at 450 so I got about a hundred thousand to go Just gonna sneak up on it here. I got about 35 thousandths to go. I'm gonna dial in 20 and uh, make sure I didn't have any spring on that last pass. Within, uh, let's see here. So I'm about two and a half thousandths large, about two thousandths large, and um, I'll worry about that in a minute. So next thing we got to do here is uh, cut this little smaller diameter on the bottom. That's just where the valve's going to go in, and uh, it's a half inch from the bottom to the where the thread starts. So uh, I'm just going to take a sharpie pen this up a little bit. I got my caliper set on half inch. And it just gives me a line to, to go to. The diameter on that's a quarter of an inch, 0 0.250. So we'll come in here and cut some more metal off. See where we're at. All right, so we're at about 295, 45 to go. thousandths large. Still 
about three and a half large. Take a real light pass here. on the money. So the next thing I do here is the angle on the end. I had, need to figure out what angle that was and um, it looked a lot like a 45 just eyeballing it. So to verify that I, I took in a machina square here and I ran it up into the corner and uh, it's I basically got a 90 degree angle there uh, on the end that fits perfectly inside my square. So that is a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to adjust my compound now and we're going to cut that angle on the uh, end there. I have my compound set at 45 degrees here now and so we're just going to come in here and uh, start cutting that back. finish on it. Alright. It's got the point on there. Got a little chip there behind it. But that looks good. Alright guys, I got my uh, little lay flat threading tool in here. We've got our lathe hopefully set to 18 threads per inch. I'm going to check that real quick and I think we're ready to thread this on here. So I slowed my lathe down. I just wanted to make sure we uh, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, inking this thing up so you guys can see my scratch pass a little bit better. Hope have a little contrast throughout the threading job. I'm doing this more for video than anything else, uh, but uh, I think you'll be able to help see it. So what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm going to start with the scratch pass. I'm just going to bring my tool in until it's barely touching right there. And um, I've got my everything set to 18 threads per inch according to the dial and everything. So. Uh, we're waiting on the half nut to come around here, or the thread dial. I'm going to engage it. I'm going to let it go across. I'm really not cutting anything at this point in time. And I'm going to stop about right there. And that'll be where we come out. I'm going to set my zero on my cross slide here so that I can go back into that point. Go back to zero. Now I'm going to take my thread pitch gauge here and I'm just going to verify that we are indeed cutting 18 threads per inch, which we are. So um, let's cut some threads. I think I am going to use a little oil on this. And we're ready for our second pass. I fed my cross slide in about a five thousandths.
вообще. So um, we're just starting to go on there, but it's still a little bit too tight. So I'm gonna probably make another light pass or two through here. But we're real close to being to our final size. Bring this back to zero. And I think I'm just gonna do about a thou on the depth. Let's cut across there. It's like more than a thou, doesn't it? It's actually a very light cut. Still a little tight, but it's going up on there, so. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do here is um, just uh, lightly file the tops of my flats. Sometimes you'll get a little burr that raises up on those. I'm not cutting off much here, guys. I'm just barely fuzzing it. And let's see if that makes a difference. All the difference in the world, that's a nice fit. I mean, it's still a little bit on the tight side, but not by much. I think it'll be fine, um, particularly after we clean it up a little bit. All right, let's check our final fit here. We come in, and that feels really good. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, we'll part this off and uh, make our head on the end. So we're using this this one here, which is another one off that same piece as a model for the head. And uh, that's about 5.8.625. So uh, let me uh, mark this. quite far enough, but that's fine. It gives me a mark to work off of. And uh, the other little thing I noticed in here is that we got a nice little uh, angle back here in the back. It's about a 60 degree angle, about the same as my, my threading tool. So I'm just gonna go in there and uh, I'm gonna use this uh, threading tool just to chamfer that, put a nice big chamfer on it. And then I'm going to change, put my parting tool in. I'm going to come over here and uh, put my parting tool in. Make sure that's about the right height it is. And we're going to cut it off at a 5X length. I'm loosening up my collet chuck. I'm pulling out my piece of stock and uh, I'm just gonna put this piece back in backwards and uh, we're gonna machine the head on it. First thing we'll do is just come in here and uh, take that little uh, 
push it off the back. I think I'll just use the same threading tool to put a little uh, chamfer on there. I won't put as much as on the other side, though. That looks fine. And there we go. Looks good. So I've got my part set up in the self-centering vise on my milling machine. I've already centered this up using the edge finder. I've shown how to do that many times before. And uh, we just want to drill a little 3 16 hole down through here. So I'm going to start with a center drill. Uh, we'll put, get us a little starting point and then we'll drill that hole through. Just need a little dimple to start. Change out bits. And build it through. All right, so I got my pin here that's going to press down in here, and we're going to come over to my arbor press now and hopefully drive this thing right home. <clears throat> Needs to go a little bit deeper. I may have to get on my other arbor press to do this. This one's kind of flopping around. Let me uh, let me get my, my bigger press out. All right, we've got about a quarter inch more I want to press this in here. And it's pretty tight, but I think we can do it with this one. All right, come on down, come on down. I got a mark on the back here. You guys can't see it, but that should be it. Voila. So I got the little piece back into the lubricator that this screws down into and let's take her for a test fit. Turn that around where you guys can maybe see it a little bit better. There we go. I think that'll be fine. All right, guys, so I realize I made a mistake. So I made this one, it's made to fit this uh, piece, but I forgot that there's a packing nut that goes on top of this. And basically what this does, you put some packing material in there and you can tighten this down and it keeps the steam pressure in. And when I did that, it wasn't long enough. So I went back and I made another one. I did it off camera. And I basically just added some length in here. And now we got a, one that comes in here and we got plenty of room for that packing material to uh, go on. Get that where y'all can see it hopefully. But uh, got a nice smooth area there for that packing material to work on. So anyway, uh, modification. <laughs> or make a new part. Um, and that's just simply because I didn't have an original to work off of and I was kind of having to design this thing in my mind. Uh, in retrospect, it probably could have been just a little bit shorter, uh, but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room in there and this is gonna work fine. So anyway, new uh, nut made there, or new uh, valve, needle valve made there. Uh, we'll put the old one back in here. This was, uh, the original one that goes down here. And this is now ready to go to my friend who's gonna actually put this on a steam locomotive that he's working on restoring. Uh, I'm gonna go see him this uh, 
coming weekend and uh, I'm going to take this over there to him. He was wanting to get it from me. And this is going to be to actually, in his situation, he's going to be using it to lubricate the brake cylinders and not the actual steam valves or steam um, uh, cylinders where the engine is, but this will be to lubricate the, the brake valves. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, nice new valve made here. That should work just fine and uh, project accomplished. So we'll get this over to my buddy and uh, I don't know if I get any video over there with him or not. He's not going to be running the, the locomotive when we're over there. I may go back over there another time when he's running it and get some video for you guys. Uh, I'm just going to be making a quick visit, but I'll be dropping this off and uh, hopefully he'll be able to get that little Glover locomotive uh, going pretty soon. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you watching, a uh, little machine shop work there. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, what have you. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, talk to you later.